Welcome back to Count Me In, IMA's podcast about all things affecting the accounting and finance world. I'm your host, Adam Larson, and I'm pleased to bring you another bonus episode from my co-host, Ruba Zidane. For this conversation, Ruba talks with Asha Merugu, the Director of Finance at EY. Asha explains her career journey in the finance industry and shares her perspective on how gender parity is being driven in many private and government sectors in India. Let's head over and take a listen to the full conversation now. So according to the global um, Findex database released by the World Bank, uh, roughly one out of two bank accounts in India remain inactive, which is about twice the average of other developing economies. What is the worst um, that you know is notable in terms of the gender gap uh, to, uh, when it comes to this amount? So for example, 54% of um, women account holders report not actually using their accounts as opposed to 43% of male holders. Do you think that there's uh, a need for financial education amongst women in order to you know render them more financially savvy no it's, it's a great question obviously yes right so there has to be a financial education amongst women there is no secondary view about it uh, but if you look at like in today's era what is very important is it just not women like even men needs financial education but of course yeah considering you know i have born in a very small village in india and uh, you know so my mother is uh, is a working professional she was you know she's a doctor and then i have seen as a kid how challenging it is for working mothers to manage a finance and a home and a work so finance was always in the hands of the father right like the major decisions were made by fathers and anything to do with the major investments in india is always made by uh, you know father of the family so that's how the most indian families which are traditionally like you know middle class and maybe a little bit higher upper middle class families would do except for some you know exceptions but but i agree with you i think you know the considering the way uh, you know the india is going on uh, you're right like most of the women or uh, in india does not have active bank accounts you know there could be majority of the reasons like for example if you take working women uh, they do have bank accounts right so because salary gets credited to bank but look at the number of transactions that happens in the account uh, i mean the service here says that most women are not very very um, investment savvy they don't really want to invest and take risk or uh, this is like a majority of the mindset because it's it's always a protective Uh, culture that we have grown up right we have been grown up as a kid that okay you have to save you have to take care you know you have to uh, you have to secure yourself and and this is how i think the education system in india works too and this is what makes women very conservative especially i feel in india and most of the women though they earn salaries and their bank account would be limited to just salary account you don't find them making the investments which men dare to make it aggressively right they don't actually spread the portfolios aggressively now coming to the question of you know like how do you give this education to your question that do you think there is a need for financial education yes i think there is a very very well important need for financial education especially amongst i think the middle class families and you know the working women category the indian government is also doing quite a few things to get this education spread amongst the communities in fact i think if you look at jan dhan yojana that india got which makes every uh, household to have an account bank account you know compulsory for the purpose of getting the pension or maybe for the purpose of getting any of the amenities which a government is passing on the government made it mandatory i think that was a great initiative uh, from a government perspective to get women teach at least there's a concept of saving and there's a concept of you having an account to get your money thereby the woman doesn't just take all the money and you know put it in the hands of a man in some families i think it's very unfortunate that you know this will happen so that way the government has done some initiatives by having this jan dhan yojana and i think bringing some education bringing all the schemes through which the small amount of the money reaches right it reaches through an account itself so uh, can even though i think the report says a lot gradually my view is that yes india is picking up you know the people are becoming extremely 
uh, you know, now savvy about using the bank accounts, you know, using digital means and more so because of the COVID, right? In the last six months, I think we have seen a, a great transformation in India. Maybe this question would have been definitely very relevant six months ago. And I see, uh, you know, because there was an option for people to use and not to use digital means and accounts and etc. Uh, you know, people maybe were, I think, not not very compelled to do it. But if you look at now, I think for, because of all of these initiatives of a government and the COVID and the digital initiatives which are coming up in India, like Digital India is the biggest initiative in India where everybody is forced to use it. I'll give you like a very small examples of how I see Indian women are using, you know, bank accounts now because they're compelled to have pay TMs and pay apps and, you know, all of those digital wallets. You know, I live in a very small place, like, you know, like it's it's actually cosmopolitan. I live in Bangalore, you know, uh, which is a which is a very good city. But there are like some places of the Bangalore which has got, you know, a small streets where all the women sit on the floor and they sell, you know, jewelry, they sell vegetables and they sell all the types of items. And I see a biggest advancement amongst them is they do accept a uh, digital mode of cash, which means they're getting comfortable, right, to start using digital initiatives. I think I, I feel, yes, there is definitely a need. I mean, it is it is definitely uh, important for government to think through more to provide a financial education. But there is definitely some kind of an advancement happening in India. So that's what I feel. Amazing initiatives, actually. It's a, it kind of gives you a very promising view of the future. But I mean, despite this rapid, rapid and consistent growth of the financial sector, if we want to zoom in on that, and specifically in India, there's a widening gender gap in the country's financial industry. I mean, with women underrepresented, uh, underrepresented in employment at nearly every single level. This is the very same ecosystem that you rose to a leadership position in, and yet you remained undeterred. So how has your experience been uh, and what were some of your guiding principles? Yeah, so it's, it's it's a journey, Rupa, isn't it? It's it's all about a journey. Leadership is, you know, all about I think the purpose of a life and living life. Um, and I truly believe in it. You would not be able to achieve anything overnight, you know, in life, right? You have to really strive for it, and you have to dream for it. And I've believed in this principle that you know you're all about your thoughts. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you're right because you thought that you can't, right? So the human mindset is always about the thoughts and the thoughts makes you and and thoughts breaks you so of course i think the woman in india definitely has to uh, you know has to just just support each other to you know like get into the ecosystem and understand each other and understand that leadership is not just a position in the organization you know i keep telling this to people like you know just because somebody is holding a directorship in an mnc or somebody is holding a senior vice president position in a in a large company that is not leadership according to me you know leadership is is just a dedicated intention to do something really great right something something which you aspire to do it you have to be a problem solver you have to be you know you have to be a person with great aspiration you have to be a driver right i mean in the workplace in the community and at home we have all the opportunity to show leadership skills and and it is it is, i think we just have to live with that purpose we have to understand that leadership is all about assuming that you are a leader by yourself and self drive things for you find an opportunity in every challenge right find a solution in every problem right just stand up like as small as a woman who stand up for the family and gives a support to the family is a true leader and we find i mean take an example of an indian prime minister right he is what he is because of his mother and he keeps saying it in all the forums that his mother was was a leader true leader for him though i think she hasn't was holding any big positions, right? She wasn't educated, but the dedication, commitment that she got to self-drive herself. She's now, I think, you know, more than 90 years old and she does all her work on her own. She lives by herself. And these are what I think are the leadership skills, uh, which is what all of us have to understand. We should never be like demotivated or disappointed by looking at a wealth or looking at, you know, someone's position because all of these are, you know, materialistic, right? A leadership is is a state of mind. If you believe that you can achieve and whatever you achieved in an area that you truly believe in, you are a leader. 
and my guiding principle always been lead by example right you have to lead by example to build a more inclusive culture and then if if you were to look at uh the you know beyond multinational companies uh initiatives do you believe that the private sector is indeed uh, presenting women with equal opportunities to rise to their full career potential and what are some of the initiatives that you can kind of uh, refer to or commend as well within that spectrum yeah no it, it's a great great question um see i'm giving more from an indian context of course i can generalize but but yeah in india you know yes there are public sector undertakings this private sector and of course there is a multinational sector which is like a larger seg- you know larger segment of a private sector uh yes i agree with you okay so i think you know to the extent yes i believe that the private sector is indeed uh, you know giving fairly more opportunities for women to raise up to their you know career potential compared to the uh public sectors i mean i'm i'm not kind of making it a very statement to say no public sector doesn't do anything but that's not what i meant yes they do but of course because of uh you know the culture in which the private sectors have grown up and because of you know uh, segmentizing the entire company right like by way of introducing departments like hr and you know introducing departments like talent culture and you know some of these uh assigning the responsibilities to get the diversity and inclusion as part of the agenda is of course driving private sectors much more faster than the public sectors you know because public sectors i think are doing better but is there like a top most part of their agenda maybe not you know it is just okay uh, because some some schemes of the government also compels here that you have to have an x percentage of women i'm sure you know when the entire elections were happening in india there was there was this entire thought process that okay some you know 30% of the entire seats have to be filled by women right and and there is say some force and something is made mandatory and therefore you know some companies just tend to tick in the box and say yes we hired women because we have we have need to have that uh, gender gap in the organization but some companies are truly taken it as a agenda and truly want to drive that initiative like you know where where i work i work for evi and evi truly drives this initiative right and i see a diversity and inclusion being very seriously taken and women employees are given a lot of flexibility when i mean flexibility you know i'm sorry if i have to like call flexibility as you know less working hours right less pressure job then it is not a flexibility then it is taking away your opportunity right a flexibility is where they're allowing you to do the work you know maybe at a at a different timelines but you're doing equally what the men is doing you know men may get get stick at like 10 am to like 7 8 9 pm maybe women needs a little more flexibility you know like maybe i'll start in the morning and then you know i will continue my schedule yes because we have a lot of things to manage we own up the family and right there's a lot of ownership you know as small as like you know if if there's no toothpaste at home we are responsible to just get it replaced and and like we are the store manager we are the producer you know we are the cook and we are like heart and soul of the entire family is this so there is a lot of pressure right so there is the companies are doing a lot uh, to give that flexibility especially you know the women needs a lot of support a couple of times in the career right like one whenever there is a marital status getting changed and you know and and there's a marriage happening is there are companies who actually have the flexibility for them to relocate from one place to another place so that she doesn't lose job and then you know also uh, continue to be a part of the same organization so there are relocation policies you know are some good initiatives when it comes to like a maternity which is like a biggest phase where most women you know it is like a boat either we sail or we drop we keep thinking you know should i or should i not and some people just make a very bold step that okay i should and some people will think oh my god you know i'm losing on the motherhood i'm not able to take care of the kid and some people will drop so you see a lot of women you know when i put like a organization structure as a triangle a lot of women drops as they start reaching on the top not because they don't have ability to reach on the top because the the age at which they start a career to a age at which they get into a middle management is a age where they also got into the you know family pressure they got into a lot of uh, you know the i mean a lot of social of uh, circumstances like something that you know they succumbed by a lot of forces and that is where women has to take a you know good step and some companies are helping some companies are having flexible you know maternity leaves like you know the organization that i used to work for had something called shared leave concept okay where 
uh, let's say six months is a maternity leave. And I think, by the way, if you know in India, that's the greatest change in India. It used to be three months, you know, of a maternity leave, which technically means like 12 weeks. And India was, I think, a good enough, uh, you know, uh, I think the Indian government was really great in putting these efforts to make it six months, which means a woman can go to maternity leave for six months in India as per the statute here. As a woman who had to fend through competition, injustice, and to some extent, unequal business worlds, um, and obviously you mentioned that your current experience is, uh, has been great with EY. And so maybe in, in your past and going into this career in finance and coming through with flying colors, well, what advice do you have for women who are looking to make it in the finance sector or even any business sector for that matter? Yeah, okay. No, it's it's a great thing. I can share insights, not really an advice, but I can just share my experiences of how one should look at the finance sector. You know, I before I share that, what I really want to you know say to a lot of women is I mean, we we are definitely changing, right? The world is changing. Um uh, think about like women's you know enrollment in higher education, like before the before like you know, even if you talk about uh like a little bit of you know while ago maybe in the year 1900s if i go was less than 10 percent and it's it's great to see now you will see around 48.6 percent as per the survey conducted by higher education uh you know uh, the body and they reported that like more than 48 percent of the women are now enrolling for higher education right and that's excellent exactly and which is a greatest change by itself so now where am i trying to give that like most of these people who are going for higher education the women tend to choose like uh, you know different parts of their career yes okay there's an aviation there is finance and you know there are different uh, you know different i think the sectors available for you to choose and i am not going to comment on the rest of the sectors i have been all my life in the in the you know in the finance sector and finance is like the blood of the organizations there's a lot of pressure you have to be like 24 bar 7 all the time thinking about you know what is changing what are the new things coming up you know we have to update because uh, the law and the regulations which comes up like you know in any country keeps on evolving right you just can't live with the same regulation which was there 10 years ago it puts you a lot of pressure to update it accustomed like you know and, and finance has now become a business partner if you look at the way uh, the function of the finance is looked in across the world and of course in india too is like finance is considered to be a business partner it is no more just collecting and paying checks and you know just just clearing some bills it's considered to be a value partner for the entire organization and finance now liaises with sales finance now coordinates with you know uh, supply chain finance coordinates with uh, technology finance coordinate with social or maybe for that matter csr you know it coordinates with the entire organization and what is my uh, you know and my advice to most of the women is be very clear in your career plan right so that's what i'm going to advise people uh, we have multiple options once you get into a field of a finance too there are multiple multiple choices you get including a choice to just drop down to choice to raise up to a next level in your career the choice is in your hand and even if i want to raise up to a next level you know we always believe that okay uh, you know should i stick to this company or just because i need a promotion i want to jump to another company you know i'm not doing well therefore i have to go to another company so most i think you know most i have seen that you know most of the people keep thinking about this hopping in my mind one has to be very clear in their career and have a long term plan right and be visible make your own brand right if you have to be very successful in the field of finance you have to be brand by yourself and this is what i keep talking to my peers and especially when we are in you know in the girls gang and we talk about is some people walk up to me and say how did you do it like you know i have two kids and managing is definitely a task okay but should we give up answer is no we should never we have to just make a brand by ourselves you working for a brand is great but are you a brand by yourself should be the choice for women and once they make the choice and they're self-reliant, you know, they, they know that people are admiring the kind of compromises they're doing, the kind of sacrifices that you're bringing, you know, the kind of initiative that you take up, you will automatically grow up in your career. So don't, I think, see a position and then start working for a position. Start working, you'll automatically get a position. 
This has been Count Me In, IMA's podcast, providing you with the latest perspectives of thought leaders from the accounting and finance profession. If you like what you heard and you'd like to be counted in for more relevant accounting and finance education, visit IMA's website at www.imanet.org.